Well, Director of uh, Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, Tim Anderson, is joining us now from Sydney. Mr. Anderson, first of all, talk to us about uh, these protests uh, that are taking place in uh, the Syrian Golan Heights and uh, the reason behind uh, uh, these uh, protests that are taking place. Thank you. Yes, well, the, the mainly Druze Syrian population of the Jolan um, have maintained their Syrian identity and their rejection of theft of their land for more than 50 years now. So the latest um, confrontation appears to be because the, the Israeli colonists are trying to steal their land for some use in wind turbines, apparently. And the religious authority there, which has great influence amongst the Druze community, is saying, stay on your land and maintain your land in face of the aggression by the colonizers. So they are a very staunch, very united community, and I imagine they're not going to be pushed off easily. Mr. Anderson, let's talk about the uh, issue of uh, the uh, illegal annexation of the Golan Heights by the uh, Israelis. Talk to us about where that stands in the international community. There are some reports that are stating that uh, the population of uh, Israelis in that area is also increasing as time goes by. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, uh, where that stands in the international uh, community and under international law? So under international law, it's very clear that it's occupied Syrian territory and the Israelis are colonizing that just as they're colonizing Palestinian land. Um, it's very clear in international law and even the US recognizes that, although we've seen in recent times of course, the Israelis themselves have tried to internally legitimize it in some sort of way, as though an apartheid state could legitimize anything. But the Trump administration a few years ago tried to also recognize that, and I think they named one of the colonies, one of the settlements in the Jolan after Donald Trump. Um, until recently, there'd been roughly equal numbers of Israeli colonists and Syrian Druze people there. It may be that the numbers of the colonists are increasing. That's been happening across the West Bank after all. How long can this continue uh, by the uh, Israeli regime? How can the status quo ever change, given the unequivocal support that uh, the likes of, uh, Israel has from the likes of the United States and its allies in international bodies like the United Nations? Well, the, the position in the, in the uh, UN is not changing at all. There's no serious move, apart from Trump's attempt at a unilateral move there to challenge that. It's clear that the... Um, uh, the conquest by uh, some conflict, as in the 1967 conflict, does not get, uh, bestow any rights on a regime to annex that territory to its own and steal it from, in this case, the Syrian state. Um, so uh, nothing is going to change there. Uh, the, the only thing that's going to change is if and when the, the, the conflict that the Israelis and the US have fomented in Syria dies down and there's a very strong coalition on the borders, the Syrians may find themselves on a, in a position to reclaim that territory. So that's what's going to be the resolution. The only legitimate international resolution is the reclaiming by the Syrians of that Syrian territory, which is virtually unanimously recognized under in, in the international community. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Anderson. Tim Anderson, Director of Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us from Sydney.